good evening. All right, so we are all here for the optional orientation, right? Is there anyone uh, sitting with any other thoughts in mind? How many of you have already decided and uh, recording how many of in progress? Are, like already taken the admission. Anyone like that here? All right. Okay, so the rest of the people are undecided. All right. Fine. So I'm Rajita and uh, I'll be handling your entire sociology optional. I happen to be uh, one of the first batch students of Shankar Sirs. And uh, I did my undergraduation in uh, engineering and subsequently my master's in public relation. And uh, regarding my UPSC experience, I went to two UPSC interviews and subsequently I got selected uh, with the All India 7th rank in uh, CSIR's administrative services examination of 2009. I, uh, I didn't quite like the job because it was very desk oriented job and uh, I quit my job and then I've been uh, into teaching. So initially I started teaching for uh, students who are preparing for uh, uh, personality tests, for group discussions, uh, for uh, CAT, that is for the uh, management aptitude test and uh, then for IIT Madras, there's a humanities entrance coaching. It's called as HSE, uh, which students take up for an integrated course soon after your 12th standard, doing uh, MA in development studies, economics, and all that. So I started taking classes for that. And since 2013, uh, I have been into uh, optional teaching. So this is how I started my career with uh, civil services teaching as such. So it's been almost 10 years since I started taking classes. And so here, uh, I am to tell you about the optional subject, all right? Okay. So as far as optional is concerned, any optional subject for that matter, there are usually two papers that you have. Paper one, where you'll have 250 marks on world level. And paper two of the same subject will be your India level. So any optional you take, this is how it is going to be, all right? So sociology is also... Very similar to that, paper 1 deals with world sociology and paper 2 deals with Indian sociology. And now we'll go into what exactly is present in this particular option. I just go uh, and tell you unit wise what is there, all right? Okay, so paper 1, it's called as fundamentals of sociology. And in this particular paper, totally there are 10 units. And the first unit is about how the subject evolved and uh, uh, exactly what are all the things which had been the background regarding the emergence of sociology as a subject. So somewhere in 1839 is when this subject started uh, taking its shape and ever since it has been uh, you know regarded as a social science. So it started like that. So the first unit deals with it. Second unit is when initially it was like considered uh, that uh, Europe is where this entire subject got created. So there was this idea about uh, how to believe this subject. So many theories, etc. are there. Can I believe it or not? And Europe entirely was believing in science. They wanted to have proof for everything. So then there were these set of people who created the subject who wanted to make sociology also very provable. So uh, to align sociology something like how physics or chemistry or biology would get regarded at that time, they started creating certain methods. And so the second and third unit is about that. How did sociology get its prominence? How did it become believable? How did it become credible as such? How to improve the research that we do in sociology, etc. Okay, so let's take a very common statement. So you would have all heard about something called as uh, um, the Nazi theory, right? The Aryan superiority theory, which was uh, held very uh, strongly by a person called Adolf Hitler. He was the previous ruler of Germany, right? So if you look into this particular theory, certain things which are there among the people as a theory, is it actually true? Do Aryans actually have that kind of uh, superiority like how Hitler regarded? Or is it like it is something that he only created? Or is it that the society had created? So when you take something like a theory, when you take, take something like a statement or you take something like a rumor, you start doing research on that to find out whether there is any authenticity in that statement. For example, we recently saw about 
a news getting circulated from Manipur. Some incident which had happened very long back, but it's getting viral right now. So there was a lot of discussion regarding fake news. So whether a news is real or whether it is fake, etc., the discussions began. So how do you verify? So there are separate authorities who verify the credibility of a particular news before it gets on to the public. But social media as such is not having any regulator. So come, come to a press, come to a newspaper, come to a video. There is a difference in how you take a news to a person, isn't it? So like that, if I have something like a statement, if I have something like a rumor, is it true or not? I want to verify. Like that I do. In sociology, some statements are there. Is it true or not? Like that they started creating methods. So how will you find out? For example, you go and watch a movie, right? You order something on Swiggy or Zomato. At the end of the day, there is a feedback which you give as a customer to the delivery agent, right? To the, uh, to the person who had given you the food and the hotel which had served you that kind of a food, you give a rating. From that rating, you kind of identify. So when you want to book an Ola cab, you look into the star rating of that particular driver, whether he or she is actually having a very good rating. That decides, so a person who is having anything about 3.5 only is considered to be more trustable. So whenever a person does an Ola ride, the drivers always have this habit of telling us, if you like the journey, please do mark me at the end. Like this, they will tell you, isn't it? Similarly, when you call a customer care executive, uh, say you are making a call to an Airtel and then you are making some query. And then at the end of the day, they will tell you, see, there will be a feedback thing that comes at the end. So please give your comment at the end. And it is used for recording purposes, for training purposes like that, they will say. So what am I doing? I'm conducting a survey, right? So survey is a research technique, right? Like I do a scaling, I do a star rating. That's called as a scaling. So we'll use those technical terms, which we will use practically in how this research work is done. So just that, your swiggy is going to become some gender studies. So instead of Swiggy, you're going to analyze gender. Instead of Zomato, you're going to analyze race. Instead of any other thing where you have done the rating, you're going to analyze some other topic, which is here. And that all is what we do in the research method. Okay. Now the fourth unit is about who are all the main people who created the subject, who all contributed to this particular subject. So what did they say? What are their theories? And are their theories actually applicable now or not? Say, for example, during the COVID time, we saw a scenario where a large number of people were doing online classes, right? So online classes became something like very common. Till then, some people only were doing, but then it became very mandatory at that time. So when I look into that, I'm sitting inside a room or I'm sitting in a space sharing that room with other people. How comfortable am I in doing that online classes? Sometimes what happens, I'm not having interaction with any other person like how I had in school. So some people, they found it very, very frustrating. So there's a term for this. It's called as alienation. That, that word was given by Marx. It's present in your syllabus. But then when we study alienation, first we will study from his perspective. And then we will try to apply. Like currently, is there any perspective for alienation? Right? We all wore masks during the COVID time. So even otherwise, we all wear masks, isn't it? We are not what we are inside, outside. To all the people, we don't show what sort of a person we are. So even this mask is just a physical mask. Even if this mask weren't there, we still wear masks. We mask our personality. We are someone else, but we show that we are someone else. So the mask actually gave us a huge cover. It was like one... Like how we wear some uniforms and we camouflage our identity, you know, mask gave that kind of an, it made it very easy for some people. Some people liked it, some people didn't like it, isn't it? Because when you smile also, you'll not even know whether the person is smiling. Then we start looking into the wrinkles that will come in the eye as to whether the person is actually smiling or not, right? So some current applications of what exactly is this alienation? Is it good? Is it bad? What does it do to the society? So like that, something on a theoretical base. And then we try to connect whether this has any kind of weightage in the present day society. Okay. So here we do have some kind of applicative part as well. Next, all these units that whatever you have, it is very highly correlated. Paper one and paper two will get correlated. Okay. So 
if you take this unit 5 stratification and mobility so here what we do is we study about uh, uh, caste we study about class etc okay let me come up with a very practical thing some of you would have gone through competitive exams even before you came to UPSC like in your 12th class some of you might have written NEET some of you might have written other competitive exams isn't it so when you gave that they would have been something called as OBC NCL OBC non creamy layer so OBC is based on your caste and creamy layer is based on your monetary position that is it's based on your class right so practically speaking we use this called as OBC creamy layer in general, we talk about EWS, economically weaker sections, right? So like this, practically whatever we are discussing, those things, what is the technical word behind it is what is there in the fifth unit, okay? So we'll be studying some theories and we'll be studying something very practical. Similarly, you would have heard about something called as a decriminalization of homosexuality, right? And recently also in the Supreme Court, there are some cases which are going on into legalizing homosexuality. So as of now, we have only decriminalized it, right? But we have not permitted marriages among homosexuals in India. But world, in some other parts of the world, these things are considered okay. These things are considered absolutely normal, fine? So when I discuss about gender, I discuss about gender fluidity, I discuss about transgenders, all these topics is what you will be studying here in the fifth year, okay? And the sixth unit is from which all subjects there have been contributions to sociology. This is something like a fusion. Okay. So sixth unit is from economics. What has come to sociology? Next unit is from political science. What has come to sociology? From philosophy. What has come to sociology? Ninth unit from anthropology. What has come to sociology? And tenth unit is presently how sociology is changing. How is technology influencing sociology? How is education influencing the society like that? So this subject, because it was one of the last social sciences to have got created, it is something like a little bit of everything is a part of sociology. So when you study sociology, it is like literally something like general studies, wherein you get a taste of little bit of politics, little bit of economics, little bit of history, little bit of anthropology, everything is a part of it. And what part of it has come, that part alone we are studying. Okay, so that's what you have as 10 units in paper 1. Now paper 2, there are certain specific unit, certain units are correlated to paper 1. Okay, so specific units is like say for example, the entire paper 2, we will not be telling 1, 2, 3, 4, we will be saying A, B and C. It's divided into A, B and C and under everything there are subsections. So totally there will be 15 units that we have. So in total, there are 25 units, but practically speaking, there are not 25 units because everything will get correlated in paper 2. I'll tell you how it is getting correlated, okay? So perspectives of Indian society, like we had world thinkers, here we are having Indian thinkers. So here we are having three important Indian thinkers. So there are six and here three, nine thinkers totally we are having. Thinkers means who have contributed to the subject, who have created or who have added to the subject are called as thinkers. Okay, impact of colonial rule is from history what has come to sociology. So here we'll be studying about freedom movements. How did it create social reform? How did it change the position of the people? All that will come as a part of it, right? Caste system. Already in paper one, we studied something called as race, like that and all. We I told you the word class. I told you the word caste there itself. So this unit and that unit is actually correlated. So here we'll be studying more in terms of Indian sociology, right? So how is caste and politics getting correlated? How are there issues in the society? How are there conflicts in the society? Conflict means fights, okay? Then tribes in India, this is exclusive. This is something from anthropology to sociology and only Indian tribes will be studying. We are not studying world tribes. And in tribes also, we are more studying tribal policy. We are not going to study this tribe, this is the characteristic, this is the feature and all that. That will be done in anthro. In socio, we are more bothered. If you become a collector in a tribal region, what is the kind of policy that you will do different between a normal rural area and a tribal village? Or say you get posted in the northeast. So there you have cities which are tribal cities. The present problem that's going on in Manipur, cookies versus metis. So one is a group of people who have a tribal status. 
and another is a group of people who do not have a tribal status and who are aspiring for a tribal status. So when I have to talk about a conflict like this, some community is presently having a reservation and a new community wants to have a reservation and the existing community is not ready for it, right? State of Tamil Nadu also had a very similar issue. There was a community called as Devendra Kula Vellalas. They come under SC status. They wanted to move out of SC to become OBC. But existingly, there is someone called as Vellalars. Vellalars are already having OBC. So they created a, they had some differences of opinion. That if you give the same name, it will become confusing. So you create a separate name. So that if people want, let them move out of SC status. It is a willingness. No? If I want, I take it up. If I don't want, I don't want. It's like that. Okay. So discussing about all that is what we will do in the practical sense. Fine. Next classes. There in sixth unit, we studied something called as influence of economics. Here it is again the influence of economics. Here influence of anthropology in paper two. So this one unit and this one unit is the influence. And religion and society, there we studied influence of philosophy. Here also it is in paper two perspective, Indian society perspective. So it is ma many things are getting repetitive. That means I will study a concept, that concept example world level, example India level. That's all. That, that concept thinker world level, thinker India level. That's all. Concept is not going to change. So half of it is going to be repetitive according to to paper 1 and paper 2, they are getting interrelated only. Okay. This is the last portion that you have. Vision of social change. So, creating some legislations. Like, let us take for example, we created a legislation called as MTP, Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act. So, in a society, we found that over a period of 50 years, population we wanted to control. So we asked people to do family planning. We started this right from 1952. But when people started to do family planning, they started killing their girl children and they wanted to have only boy children. Even Economic Survey 2019 discussed this scenario called a son meta concept. That is people want to have as many sons as possible and we are killing our daughters. So we are facing not just a revenue deficit or a current account deficit or a fiscal deficit. We are facing a daughter deficit in India. Okay, so when I face a daughter deficit, right, what do I do to overcome the daughter deficit? I have some law for it and that's called as MTP. So finding out the sex of a fetus and aborting the fetus because it is going to be a girl baby or aborting a fetus because it's going to be a boy baby. It is going to be an injustice to the either of the child, right? So you're not supposed to do that. We had a legislation for it. So how does a society change when you bring a law? So we were a society which practiced sati, a law came in and over 150 years, 1829, 1929, 1987, three times we had to keep on making amendments. Today, to some extent, we know that known instances of sati is not. So certain things, when you create a law-based change, it will take a lot of time to trickle down in the society. So like that. What change is getting created in the society? How did constitution create a change? How did education create a change like that? What do we want India to be? All that is a part of this vision of social change. And rural and agrarian transformation. So you would have heard about certain things. No, PM Kisan scheme. In PM Kisan scheme, 6,000 rupees directly to the farmer, the government is giving in three installments of 2,000, 2,000, 2,000. So I'm going to launch a scheme like this. What is the kind of transformation that is happening in rural India. Is it creating a rural development? Is it alleviating or is it bringing down the poverty? All that. Did Green Revolution actually make us to come out of our bad situation? Did it, did it show the fault lines in the society? Did it, did it tell us where we are going wrong? Can we improve from there? All that in terms of our agriculture. What is the current status? Where we have to go? What are all our problems? All this is covered here. Here as well as in unit B. Some parts are static, some parts are dynamic. Okay? Then already we studied politics and society. I told you in paper 1. Same thing in paper 2 also. Social movements, this is a part of this only. Separately we are having it as a unit, but it is a part of politics only. Population dynamics, this is unique. I told you about daughter deficit. Like that you will keep hearing certain terms, no? 
Japan actually is facing a scenario called as depopulation. So there is a shrinking of the Japanese population. Age is going higher and higher. Number of newborns are reducing in the society. So we call that there is a reduction in the population size, a reduction in the population rate. Like these some terms and all we use, no? All that is a part of population dynamics. Similarly, you would have heard certain words that during COVID time, lot of people who migrated, they were reverse migrating. They are coming back to their villages itself. So like this, we hear certain things. So those terms are all what we have here in population dynamics. Okay, so this is a this is an arrow. It's like uh, challenges to social transformation is the word. Okay, so what are the challenges that we are having, right? So what are all the challenges that we have? One big challenge that is there is say some issues like communalism, uh, issues like fundamentalism, violence against women, then environmental degradation. Presently, what are all our current affairs related problems? All that is what we have. But here. We will not be studying it like GS, we will be studying it in, uh, in terms of what is the consequence on the society. How does it impact the people? So I have, a, okay, Chennai declared a day zero a few years back. Day zero means zero water, no new water for drinking purposes. Supply for water was entirely cut in every part. Before this, we had a day zero declared in South Africa, right? So like this, if I have some situation called a day zero, how am I going to tackle? So this is a problem of urban spaces. Similarly, Bombay is getting heavily flooded. Urban flooding is a problem. So when I study this in geography, I study it as a concept called as urban flooding. I talk about tributaries, distributaries, aquifers, how we make constructions on top of it and all that. So that's very technical. But what we study here is, say, there is a problem in terms of urban flooding. How does it impact the old? How does it impact the children? How does it impact the people who are living in slums, who gets more impacted? Like this, we start making a sociological analysis about it. See, usually when there are floods, there are also situations where new crimes come up. Isn't it? It becomes very easy to create some. You would have never expected such a situation will happen like that, right? So certain things of, about that kind of an analysis is what we do here, right? So these are all the changes that are happening to the to our society okay so one part of the syllabus is exclusively for paper one exclusively for paper two 60 percent of the syllabus is correlated between paper one and paper two okay so this is how you have as the pattern in the syllabus all right okay so now for people who are new to sociology what are the pros and what are the cons okay so Syllabus is like from scratch. You don't have a background in sociology and you want to start. You know to read. You can read sociology. And you need to have five to six months of time to prepare when you start from scratch. You don't need to have any, you know, proficiency in the subject previously to pick up the subject. You can start from scratch. Subjects like these are easy to pick up because it's very highly correlated to what you read in the NCRT itself. So whatever you see around you, you try to give it a new dimension and you start writing. So from the basics and degree level is what is expected out of here and the syllabus itself is very beautifully correlated. Okay. Next is the results. I'll talk to you about the results. It's very high clearing. 16 to 19 percent clearance rate is there among those candidates who appear for mains. Right. And syllabus. Syllabus is very limited as I told you because it's correlative half of the time. So you study a concept, just your examples have to change. And one important aspect is you don't need to recreate textbooks. That means if you are a person who understands a concept, you can write it in your own language, in your own sentence. You don't need to mug and reproduce it onto your textbook. If you want to do it, you can do it. If you don't want to do it, you need not do it. So it gives the freedom for any kind of a student to survive in this particular subject. Just retain the keyword and write it in a way that it is understandable to the evaluator. That's more than enough. All right. And reference books plentifully available. And of course, I'll cover entirely whatever is your syllabus. What are the challenges? If you are a person who can't create sentences, that is you should write simple NCRT language like full sentences. If you have a problem in sentence creation, no, 
that means you can't write broken broken sentences you are writing for example uh, say i want to tell the temperature has risen in the classroom so just temperature is rising alone is not enough i have to say temperature is rising because of this and i have to complete the sentence so you have to complete the sentence you have to write it in a sentencical format and for this matter any optional subject you have to write it like this gs it's enough if you write half answers that means hanging points are okay in gs hanging points means only keyword is there you're not writing it in sentence it's okay but you can't survive in any optional subject with writing only keywords you have to write it in sentence so sociology you need to write if you want to know what level you have to write just pick up the ncrt and see what level it is there that level if you have simple basic level it is there it is more than enough but you should write sentence and down south there is very very less awareness about sociology because science usually dominates if you go to the northern parts of india the arts groups dominate so there is a general more awareness in southern india that is not their professional courses are very highly regarded and so there is definitely it is like half of the time people want to pick up something which is very aligned with what they have studied in school half of the people wouldn't have studied these things in school so it's new for them so that's that's something which they don't so they feel scared but there's nothing to feel scared about it but yeah this is the general thing that we have down south okay now whatever whoever tells anything this optional is better than that optional please don't believe anything every optional creates equally good results you compete within that optional okay there used to be a time wherein marking patterns of optionals were very different from 2019 onwards all the optionals they are fetching good enough kind of marks you have to do well in that optional so you have to find where where you like something where you are able to relate to something and of course where you have some kind of a guidance so there is nothing like this is better than that that's then you if you have any doubt in what i say you just take the top 20 rackers and you see the background of their persons you will find that they are belonging to different optionals only i'm not telling this for the sake of it you can just check and see all right and yeah this thing i've already explained okay so what do you get if you do sociology other than this what all does it help you with uh yeah so it helps you with your gs paper 1 so gs paper 1 there is something called a society in india and uh, on an average you have six questions so 75 to 85 marks comes from that and essay writing usually you have at least one essay which is based on some particular core subject the content that you build from the optional you can use it in the essay writing as well so that's one and of course irrespective of your background anyone gets only social issues in the interview they ask you about your district issues your state issues your profession related issues all that so everyone has to touch base on social issues because we are going to deal with social issues only in reality so interviews are generally very helpful when we have this background and in state services examination many state services examination either it's a part of a general study so some places like in up in karnataka in west bengal in all this there is a separate option subject there also it is the same syllabus only that you are having one or two keywords will be different but otherwise you can just keep repeating so many people they clear other public service commissions group 1 also with this preparation and of course say for example let's be practical we put in some years we are not able to crack the prelims after a particular time say we've given two to three attempts and then after three attempts we want, we are looking for something like a backup because we have the age but after a particular time we can't keep stagnating there so we look for other options which is of with whatever we have already studied so that we can create a backup and continue with our preparation so usually students get into consulting policy consulting so they get placed into ipac they get placed into uh, so they do some kind of uh, you know uh, skill upgrade courses for example in i am bangalore there is a rural fellowship program so there it's like a it it usually happens in the month of october and you get recruited like as if it is a cadre placement only around 600 candidates get placed you get a stipend amount also but the core portions there it is like very similar to how you have as you upsc preparation so you have a written round you have a you know a discussion round and then you have an interview stage and all that 
So many people keep that as a backup option. They go into that, they take one year there and then parallelly they give the exam. So just in case the prelims gets a little delayed, your main preparation should be such that whenever you clear prelim, you should be in a position to get into the rank list. So for that, some backups like this in terms of policy, in terms of research work, right? For example, you would have noticed two years back, gate sociology has come. So IIT is offered a, a PG program in sociology. So the same and the thing that you study for the optional, it will help you to clear that entrance examination. You can do your masters, you can do your PhD as well. And then parallelly you can do the preparation. So for people, in case after a couple of years, we feel stagnation at the prelims level and we are looking for something like a backup. This could be some kind of a backup wherein you stay rooted in your preparation and you don't need to be financially dependent on your folks anymore. Okay, so for that, this is, there is some kind of other avenues which are available, but people generally don't talk about it. You need to know. When you get into something, you need to know in and out of what you're getting into. Only then it makes sense. All right. Okay. So, fine. So, now as to what we'll do with sociology is, we'll cover everything from the syllabus and uh, we'll be starting classes from coming Thursday. The class time will be 5 to 7.30. It's not 5.30 to 8. It is 5 to 7.30. Okay. And uh, we'll be classes, having classes on all weekdays. A few days, if in case we have any other extra classes, because this means if there is any pattern change, I might have to cover that as well. So ideally, if we start now, I will complete by January. I'll take time till January to complete. So on an average, we will have at least 90 classes. It might stretch to 100 to 103 classes. It depends. Okay, depends is because it will, if I have to create results, I have to go in depth. And you have to be with me, you have to just follow the course. So after you finish each and every unit, we will be having sectional tests. So sectional test means, say I we do unit 1, unit 2, then you will be writing small portion tests out of that and you will be going in a integrated manner. That means initially you will be doing 1 hour 3 questions, then 1 hour 4 questions, then 1 hour 5 questions, then 1 hour 6 questions. And you will be writing tests till March. Your exam is on May 26th. So till March until you complete the portion. So classes will be done. Apart from your classes, you will be having this test. So 10 tests will be conducted for you. And in these 10 tests, all the portions will be covered. So that you write and see one round before you go for the preliminary examination. So this, is, this will be the plan. So you write, your papers will be evaluated, there will be separate mentoring for optional and these mentors will be people who are either interview candidates or people who have taken a sabbatical, like who have skipped this attempt this year. So there will be two to three people from the previous batch students who are either posted in Chennai or who are uh, based or who can come to Chennai from the previous, uh, you know, batches, okay. So this will be the people who will be your mentors. And your papers will be evaluated and your feedback will be given. And you will be continuously monitored in terms of like say test 1 to test 4. What sort of a progress you are making. For example, see some people they study. But then when you are presenting it onto writing, you might not be able to do it. So how each person will have some exclusive challenge, exclusive problem. So that will be monitored and your mentor will be helping you as well. So this is the plan. Okay. So writing practice, periodical tests and evaluation, this is how the UPSC does. So we will also be doing it in a similar way and all your feedback will be one to one. That means there is no group feedback and all. It's one to one. That means you write your paper, your paper, your feedback will be given to you. Okay. So this is how it is going to happen. All right. So this is about the optional. What is the syllabus? What is the plan? And what are all the challenges that all you are having? Okay. So now for the results. So this year's
I'll show you till 2019 because there are a lot of candidates. Maybe once you come to the sessions, we'll interact further. Okay, so there are more than uh, 300 people whose names are there here. Okay, so now I'm open for questions. If you have any questions, you can ask. Yeah, like I spoke to you already, in uh, uh, in prelims, there is no correlation as such. But in mains, if you take in GS1, there is society in India, which is exactly ditto of what you have here in the syllabus. But society has more of generic content. We go a little depth here. In paper 2, GS2, there is something called a social justice, which is, is a part of governance. And that has an overlap. And um, in uh, GS3, there is no overlap. But in GS4, in case studies, there are at least two case studies from social issues. And there are some statements of philosophers which are asked in uh, ethics part. So there is some kind of an overlap. And of course, as I spoke to you already on the <coughs> essay. So this is the overlap that you are having. OK, fine. So if in case you decide to come to sociology, we will be starting from coming Thursday. Thursday class will begin at 5 o'clock. So 5 to 7.30 is when you will be having the classes. We usually run it on weekdays. Uh, sometimes we might have class on Saturday. But I will never keep a class on Sunday. Okay. So uh, again, I will inform to you in prior. Okay. Nothing on last minute and all that. We will go as per a regular schedule. And uh, there will be a telegram channel. And there is a separate student telegram group that we will create after people decide okay so this one group is going to be how the institute is going to communicate to you regarding any uh, any changes or anything whatever and uh, this will also be the official medium of communication for student interactions like say specifically you have any queries like any academic doubts and all that for that students usually maintain a particular uh, group and I, you, I participate as a part of that particular group so that I can also help you if in case you have any doubts. And uh, so uh, uh, there will be a particular uh, schedule that we are following. So once we start the classes, initially uh, we'll be starting with uh, what is the focus of each and every part of the syllabus? What is the weightage? Which unit from where to study? How they have asked the questions? How much marks is coming from every unit? And then how to base the preparation from there? And how to make best use out of the classes. And you will be given proper material. You will be given three books. And uh, in this book itself, there will be everything covered. That means all the reference materials that are there. Usually we follow around the six to seven textbooks. From those textbooks, whatever is the important portions that has been compiled together. And it is given to you as a material. So... Apart from your class, if you follow that itself, you will be getting, a, you don't need to go searching for material and all that. It will be given to you. And any current affairs upgrade, whatever we are doing, we will be doing it in the classes itself as and when it happens. So usually, once we are done with the classes, subsequent year, when students write the main examination, um, we have something like a, you know, uh, some set of revision classes and all which we give. And that differs. So initially students who are appearing for the mains, I'll complete the revision. And then I do it for the students who are writing for the subsequent mains. So we have like two phases. So that any new upgrade, anything that happens, you are like staying in touch with it. Because little bit of what you have in uh, uh, paper two, when we write like this, no, the marks go up like anything. Because this year, people have scored up to 159. So you saw... Uh, uh, Abhinav, you saw Ram, you saw all these people, they have scored about 290. So five students have scored about 290. And all of them, they have like scored above 150 in each of the papers. 
and that doesn't come by just like that you know we need to put in some effort and we need to go it go in the basic direction and if we do that we'll be able to, so telling that we'll have a magic figure of 300 it is not something which is uh, you know always the case because they have to give 300 only then we can get sometimes the average scores like for example gs3 this year the average score itself is only 67 68 so how will i get 100 when they are giving only 68 there is some kind of a pattern in house so in that subject we have to come within the top 10 percentile of students top 20 percentile of students only then we will stand a chance to go to the interview so that level of preparation when we do we are like irrespective of which center in india we write the exam from we have a higher chance of getting very good marks in the optional okay so we need to base so the people whom you see around you know who, who might be in your classes they are not your competitors the real competitors are not just beside you they are sitting in different parts of india so half of the people are whom you don't even know but always from school college and all that no we make comparisons to the people who sit beside us who you know whom we know and all that but here half of our people are unknown isn't it so that way we will also need to gear up our preparation all right okay fine so you are very very dull dull what happened you have any, nothing to tell you have any questions No, ma, as we spoken, there's no need to replicate anything. Just if you hold, you understand the meaning and you write it in your own words by just retaining certain keywords. So, what is the keyword we'll be discussing in the class? So, this topic means these are the keywords. You should retain the keyword and the rest of it, however you write, it doesn't matter. Because, see, if you repetitively write same answers, the first person who writes that answer will get very good marks but subsequently same answers if it gets repeated in the paper the marks keep going down so it's always better that you retain your originality and you just retain the keywords because in upsc kino they give only the keywords they don't give you sentences they don't give you thinkers names nothing we can write anyone that doesn't matter any example that doesn't matter so you have the freedom to be on your own provided you just need to write the answer to the question and for that you need to have concept clarity you need to have subject so if you build the subject knowledge this year and you get all your notes everything ready once you finish your prelims you can start with your revision phase and you can start with your writing phase in a full-fledged manner so now you have to ensure that the next five to six months you are kind of ready with all the content that you need okay all right guys if there are no questions i think we can leave